Hello and welcome to another standard games video. Today we're taking a look at a four color legends combo deck that actually features two distinct combos that can each win the game by dealing infinite damage. So there's a little bit of overlap between the two combos when it comes to the actual win conditions. We can either win with tiny bones joints up or with the sadistic pilgrim. The pilgrim gains a life when a creature enters under our control whereas it drains the opponent for one when a creature we control dies. And then a tiny bones joints up starts out by making the opponent discard a card, and whenever a legendary creature enters a battlefield under our control, any number of target players each mill a card and lose one life. So we could both mill the opponent to death or just uh, drain them to death by making them lose a life repeatedly. So these are the win conditions. And then a combo number one requires Bartolome in play. This can sacrifice another creature at will, so we can repeatedly keep sacrificing the same creature over and over if we'd like, as long as we have a way to keep getting it back out of the graveyard. And that's where Donitha comes in handy, alongside a Necrogen Communion. This is the only aura or equipment in the deck. It says when the enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under our control. And then Donitha, when it enters, can return an aura card from our graveyard back into play attached to Donitha, so we just need communion in hand or in the graveyard, play Donitha, sacrifice it to Bartolome, Donitha dies, and then a communion triggers returning Donitha, in turn returning the communion, rinse and repeat, and as long as we have pilgrim or tiny bones in play, we can drain the opponent to death. So that's combo number one. Then combo number two uses the same win conditions, but now instead we want a Relic of Legends on the battlefield, which can help tap our legendary creatures to make one man of any color. And then we need one copy of Arona, which can untap whenever we cast a legendary spell, and then in the meantime it can tap to draw a card and then discard, so that can help sculpt our hands to assemble these various combos. And then once we get the Relic of Legends in play, we can start using Rona to make mana instead. And then we need two copies of Honest Rutstein. One of them could already be in the graveyard and we can still combo off. And then Honest Rutstein says our creature spells cost one generic mana less to cast. So it can maybe discount other copies of Rutstein down to just a black and a green. And then when it enters the battlefield, we can return a creature card from our graveyard to our hand. So we have a Rutstein in play. We tap it for either a black or a green with Relic of Legends. Runa does the same, so we have a black and a green now. And then we cast on this Rutstein from hand. A legendary rule applies, so we can only keep one Rutstein. We'll keep the untapped one. Rutstein goes to the graveyard. Rutstein triggers returning the Rutstein that we just put in the graveyard. So we have it back in hand. And then, of course, we have an untapped Runa and an untapped Rutstein. So we can rinse and repeat and once again drain the opponent with Pilgrim or with Tiny Bones joints up. So those are the two combos, which of course doesn't leave much room for author interaction, but I did include four copies of Cutdown to try and keep up with all the aggro decks and the format, and we can also take advantage of Concealed Courtyard being in standard now, so that's another untapped black source on turn one. And then a mana base, of course we are playing a four-color deck, requires Plaza of Heroes as a very important mana fixing tool. And then Cavern of Souls, often naming human, can also make most of our creatures uncounterable, so that can also help against opposing control decks. And then we've got a lot of these black fast lands to play early. And then the full set of Abandoned Mire, which we can cheaply channel if we control some legendary creatures. And this can mill three cards and return a creature from our graveyard to our hand, so that can also help assemble the missing combo pieces. Sometimes we actively want to mill ourselves with Tiny Bones joints up, which is also an option when a legendary creature enters, even though it will cost us one life, but that's a way of filling the graveyard to maybe set up our abandoned mire to get back a key combo piece. And then we've got one swamp in case we need to search it up, and I ganjo for a tiny bit more interaction and can also cheaply channel this one. Now we could also build a Legends combo deck around Slogurk, which is very good with all these channel lands that you can keep getting back out of the graveyard, but I wanted to go in a slightly different direction here with a Donitha combo as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, and uh, currently cannot cast too many of my spells, but once we get Relic in play we should be fine. And then we have Rona, Rutstein, plus Relic, so we're just one Rutstein away from maybe comboing off. We'll still need something to actually win the game with. Alright, Virus Beetle makes me discard. I don't think I'll need Cut Down, even though I could just discard a creature and get it back with Rutstein can also expect the opponent to play some removal. And then if Rona survives, we can next turn play Relic into Bartolome. Ah, opponent with a Restoration. 
So they get to ramp a little bit. Could go Relic into Bartolome. I think that's reasonable. And then we get to untap Rona, so it can still activate. Could do that now. In case I find something useful. Courtyard can go. And pass it back. So Tiny Bones joins up, or Sadistic Pilgrim, in combination with another Rutstein, could set up our infinite loop. And we can maybe channel Abandoned Mire. Could have done so using my two legendaries already end of turn. But maybe prefer having a creature already in the graveyard to be guaranteed some value. And I have to imagine Black White is going to have more ways to destroy or discard. Virus Beetle. Yeah, I guess we'll just uh, ditch a Cavern of Souls now. Okay, so activate Rona for starters. Find a cutdown, which I also don't really care about. So I can maybe channel the Abandoned Mire now, see what we hit, and then still maybe play Rutstein afterwards. Can also transform Rona, but prefer the looting ability. So. This could tap, or I guess it doesn't matter, we can just use our other mana. Alright, we did mill one creature. Rudstein also only gives back creatures. So, again, not super interested in casting it right now. Can uh, go for Plaza. And pass. So there's communion in the graveyard in case we find Donitha. And then again, still need Tiny Bones or Pilgrim. Could also decide to sacrifice Rona to Bartolome to eat a virus beetle and get something back with Rutstein, but yeah, opponent was bound to play something like Shieldred. So for now, maybe sag Bartolome. And there's Donita, okay. So Arona could make mana to run out Donitha and then still play Bartolome, have Rutstein left. And then I guess I could still activate Arona, and in case we draw Tiny Bones joins up, we can win right now. Or I guess Pilgrim would have done it too. We'll just have to settle for Bartolome. So we now have a situation where we can grow Bartolome infinitely large, which I guess is not a bad starting point. So we can add as many counters as we'd like while the coast is clear. And then uh, I guess Rona can also still activate and maybe let us draw a Tiny Bones joins up. We can also make infinite mana here with Relic of Legends. So I guess it doesn't hurt to activate Rona once again. Cut down is not going to do it. But yeah, I could also transform Rona here by just using Relic whenever Donitha returns to make mana. I'll just make this Bartolme up to 20 power, so it's lethal by itself. Right now, if I play Rutstein, there's only Bartolome to get back. But yeah, we're just a Pilgrim or Tiny Bones away from draining the opponent to death. And for now, we've got a creature that can keep returning unless it gets exiled. Now, I guess we have a lot of cards in Graveyard, so they can transform Shieldred potentially. So that's a uh, potentially concern. But I have to do this now 
Otherwise, instant speed removal could break up the combo. And I do want to make sure this Bartolme can be lethal by itself. So no use for infinite mana, sadly. But this will do for now. Okay. Pass the turn. And we'll see what they can come up with. Right, they're gonna transform shield roots. Going after Bartolome. Yep, so we can just get that back with Rutstein now. But it means we wasted this entire time activating it. Okay, Rona finds another Bartolome. So I can still hang on to Rutstein. Another relic we don't need. Alright, so we're basically in the same situation as before. And uh, yeah, if we want to play optimally, I have to get this up to 20 power again. Which is a bit of a drag. So next turn what happens, we discard three cards and then mill three. Well, I guess I should play Rutstein then. Which means... Arona gets to untap, and we maybe have a shot at finding our combo piece. Alright, there we go, so now we can actually win the game. That makes more sense. Alright. Can also mill the opponent out for what it's worth. All right, and our opponent has seen enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. With uh, keepable hands, mostly relying on Rona to do the heavy lifting. I'll need to play Cavern on Phyrexian, maybe, to play Pilgrim right now. Arona down. Can maybe get it back next turn. Glissa is bad news. I think I still prefer just getting Arona in play as soon as possible, although it's not very mana efficient is a problem. Yeah, I guess Rutstein's fine. It means I can play Arona for one mana in the future. So Golgari midrange is going to be packing some spot removal to break up our combo. For now an underdog, that's acceptable, and a relic is a decent draw. Okay, so probably still fine to name human now that we found our white mana. Play relic. Play runa. So we're just another Rutstein away from potentially comboing off here. So we can make some black mana. Play Pilgrim. Rona cannot loot, but can still make mana for us. So once again, use Rona. Play Bartolome. And that's going to be it for now. Okay, so not a bad turn. Go for the throat on a Pilgrim, can sack it in response, and we have a backup in hand, so not a disaster. And I'll just take it. Huntsman's Redemption, okay. Opponent gets to make a beast. Next turn, maybe tutor up a creature. 
So that might be able to find something to interact with our combo. For now, we get to untap. Step one, activate Runa. Another relic I don't need. Play Pilgrim. Untap Runa. And we did not quite get there. Unless we're willing to play another Runa. And then what are we drawing towards? Don't have communion for Danitha. So it's really just another Rutstein to win right now. Which, uh, yeah, I mean, 3 in 46 is not the best odds. So might prefer keeping an extra Rona in hand for the time being. And then I'll play another Relic in case it can blow up my artifact for now. Alright, so... Not loving my position. Opponent getting to untap here. Glissa drawing them extra cards each turn. They can maybe get some graveyard hate. Shield Root can also punish Runa. Opponent just getting a land instead. Is this a board wipe incoming? Just another go for the throat. So now I still need to find a replacement Pilgrim or Tiny Bones joins up to actually win the game. And there's Shield Root. Okay, so that happens. They can also remove counters from my Bartolome if they'd like, but I imagine they'll be drawing. So we have a limited time here to find what we need. And Shieldred significantly shortens our clock. Take our draw step, Tiny Bones joins up. Alright, so... I just need another Rutstein to win the game. It's that simple. So, activate. That's not it. And I just have to go for it now. Did we get there? All right, so we're dead. Close one. Just one combo piece away. If we did find Rutstein, we can basically play it, making mana with Relic of Legends, so it kind of pays for itself with a discount. Rinse and repeat, and drain them with Tiny Bones at the same time. So I guess we didn't even need Bartolome for that part of the combo, but yeah, we're dead here. Blitzed Underdog, attack all out, and that'll do it. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. So we have redundant win conditions, Bartolome missing Danitha plus the uh, Communion, Rona missing Relic and double Rutstein, so that one's a little further from happening. And then I don't mind maybe milling myself with the enchantment going forward, as we can Trying to mill communion, so if we draw Danitha, we can immediately get it back. Opponent on red green, pretty fast deck. I think I still want to play Rona to try and sculpt my hand in the next few turns. And yeah, maybe against red green, I can't afford to lose one life. Opponent getting a slick shot in exile. Okay. Start here. Find relic, that's nice. So don't need another tiny bones. So I think we just play relic, and that's gonna be it for now. Versus I guess I can play a two drop on Taparona to loot once again. 
Yeah, I guess maybe that's better. Just getting that one extra on tap. Since next turn we don't have anything too amazing planned. So there's a show-off, and we're likely going to see a flurry of pump spells. Kumano, good enough for Swiss Spear and show-off. I can trade away the Pilgrim since we have Tiny Bones. But not going to put Rona in harm's way just yet. Right. Could have maybe absorbed two damage, it seems. Alright, found communion, so now we're just a Donatha away from potentially winning. So that's exciting. Um, so yeah, communion can definitely be discarded. A Rutstein's not bad. So now I'm also just another Rutstein away from the author combo. So we've got a lot of good top decks. And then for now, could still get back a Pilgrim perhaps. Or I can go Relic into Bartolome, untap Rona, and be able to activate it again. And then if we draw into either Rutstein or Donatha, we're good to go. Now, I might want to mill myself, because if I mill Donatha or Rutstein, both are fine. So it's kind of like drawing a card. Got rid of a land, that's good. Scamp is acceptable. So they might be out of non-creature spells here. Alright, that gives us more time. And a Picnic Ruiner. Alright, can we find what we need? Abandon Mire, interesting. So if I channel that for two mana... What are we hoping to accomplish? If I find Donatha, I can cast it and then we win. If I mill Rutstein then we can also win, and at the very least I can get back the Rutstein. So I think that's better than keeping Rutstein itself. Plaza of Heroes. So I think step one, channel Abandoned Mire. And we mill Donatha, perfect, so that should do it. Cast Donatha. Get back Communion, and start draining the opponent to death. Awesome. But yeah, we had a lot of avenues to victory here. Since the Rutsteam combo was pretty much assembled as well. So our opponent's going to figure out at some point that they're dead, but I'm happy to go through it. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand doesn't really do anything. Can't even cast cut down until Bartolome can stick around, so take a mulligan. This is much better. And then... Probably get rid of the Pilgrim, since Tiny Bones does the same in terms of win condition and is harder to interact with. And then we actively want to discard the Communion to Rona if we get the chance. Alright. Second Tiny Bones, not as useful. But can still make him discard a card or discard it ourselves to Rona.
All right, don't have high hopes for Rona surviving, but I'm going to try. And then do I want to mill myself? I think I'll wait on that until we have a better idea what the opponent's up to. All right, lockdown, that's a uh, setback. We do have a back of Tiny Bones, at least. But now pretty far from any of our two combos. Our creatures being exiled also a lot worse than in the graveyard, since we won't be able to get them back with old Rutstein. Now it might be worth milling myself, since we do have Abandoned Mire to maybe get stuff back as well. And since we're up against control, our life total's not going to be under too much pressure. Alright, Donitha, with Communion in hand, means I just need a Sacrifice Outlet, meaning Bartolome. And then, of course, a way to get Donitha back. So we're getting closer. Elishnorn. Alright, that's uh, probably game over. Since now Donitha doesn't trigger to put Communion back on itself. And the Rudstein combo. Rudstein also doesn't trigger. So yeah, Elishnorn just completely shuts us down. And uh, I don't think there's a realistic way for us to remove it. I guess I Ganjo plus maybe creature blocking. But that's a bit of a stretch. I mean, I can play defense, but Bone's not going to attack into the Pilgrim. So yeah, I mean, Elishnorn's pretty simple answer to this particular setup. Laid on arms, exiles Pilgrim. Elishnorn can attack. Play Pilgrim. Probably should have kept up Plaza. Don't get to trigger Tiny Bones either. But uh, I mean, I'll happily trade Pilgrim for Elishnorn. Even if I don't have Plaza to make it indestructible, but opponents. Clearly doesn't uh, want to take that trade. All right, well, not much we can do here. It's been a while since I've seen Ilishnorn played in Best of One Standard, at least. Used to be a thing when the Domain deck was popular, since it's a good way to shut down cards like Leyline Binding and Atraxa. So it kind of had its moment there, but nowadays doesn't see much action. All right, so we should be dead in about a turn or two. Storefront triggering twice with Elishnorn doesn't net you an extra lane, sadly. But it does gain you more life with uh, Paragon. Another laydown arms. Well, I mean, I guess I may as well. So now we get a free block if they attack on the ground. Opponent just wants to draw with the wedding announcement, it seems. I did consider adding one Odawara as a bounce spell, which could come in handy for situations like these. But uh, yeah, can't really afford to play too many blue sources since our mana's already strained as is. And I wanted to prioritize Abandoned Mire as a more useful utility lane to actually progress our combo. But uh, yeah, opponent should have it here as they remove Pilgrim once again. Could have put a Communion on it, but with all the exile base removal it didn't seem too productive. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got Tiny Bones into Arona, into Relic, and then Bartolome. So that's working towards the Donatha combo. But with Rona and Relic, double Rutstein could also combo off. So, yeah, we've got a decent hand here. Couple different avenues to victory, facing red-white tokens. So it is a pretty fast deck. Yeah. 
don't need to worry too much about opposing interaction. So it's all about whether they can deal 20 damage before we assemble the combo or not. Do they also have... yeah, they do. Demolition. Can activate Warden again, so this is about as good as it gets for the token deck. I guess turn two you could technically convoke a Knight Errant as well, but... Yeah, it's gonna be tough. Can't afford to lose additional life. We actually milled a Knight Errant. So what's our best case scenario? Probably win with old Rudstein. Assuming we find two of them. Evangelist setting up for next turn. And then Warden can still grow an attack. So I don't know if we get another turn. Probably gonna be dead next turn. Well, we drew Rudstein, so... Is there any way I can pull it off from this situation? I still need to get Relic of Legends in play first. For the Rudstein combo. So I think that's gonna be a little too slow. Can go Relic into Pilgrim. Untap Rona. So we have two blockers. But uh, I think we're still taking Lethal next turn. If I play Bartolome, I guess that's fine as well. Just to gain the extra life of Pilgrim. Untap Rona again. Uh-oh, mill the frontline or two. Uh, okay, let's uh, pass it back. Opponent on Earth's frontliner. So I don't want to lose Rona, Bartolome. This is probably unlikely to matter since we're pretty far from Donata plus the uh, enchantment. So what's the most damage we can soak up? Something like this. So we were taking 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 16. That's a little bit too much. Alright, GG's. Let's see. If we were close to another Rutstein cut down, well, hold on a second. I guess we can still cast cut down. That's why we played out. Take out the bat token. And then no need to sack anything to Bartolome. So we're at one. So if I draw another Rutstein, I could win. And we do have a couple redraws with Rona. And that's not it. Alright, let's see if we get there. Rutstein. Trigger Rona. And then in response to this trigger, I could also... Um, Hmm. I guess had I switched the sequence here and first gained life with Pilgrim, I could have afforded to mill myself with Tiny Bones just to dig one card deeper. Um, but I guess for now we're just getting back Bartolome. So yeah, I can't afford to lose one life since this resolves first. So that happens. All right, so one final redraw with Rona, potentially. Can we find Rudstein? Communion? Yeah, I'm not going to be able to assemble Communion plus Donatha this turn. So I guess we can still play Bartolome, just to untap Rona. Can we find Rudstein? Did we get there? All right, just a plaza. Well, I'm kind of surprised we still survived that turn and got kind of close to comboing off. Just needed one more Rudstein and we would have gotten there. So now a good game for sure. 
On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. With a promising hand, I would say. Early cut down, turn to Rona. And then we're missing, on the one hand, Rutstein plus Relic. And on the other hand, we're missing uh, Donitha plus Bartolome. So we'll see which of the two combos we're gonna get. Turn one planes and initiates. All right, good target for cut down. Can wait and see if uh, they present something scarier. Thalia's not the biggest problem for our deck. Doesn't stop the combo. And we're mostly a creature deck after all. It's gonna be a Vanguard. That one I can take out with cut down, so I think I prefer that over taking out the initiate. Take one. Aruna can block it. Hoping they don't have a brutal Cathar. And then we want to try and put this communion in the graveyard as soon as possible, since it doesn't do much good in hand. Alright, main phase reinforcements. And what's happening here? Just another initiate. Maybe they're afraid of a counter spell. Okay, so activate Rona, discard communion, and then could play the pilgrim, or I could discard a creature and then immediately get it back with Rutstein. Can uh, see what we find. Just a land. Yeah, I guess we'll Pilgrim first. In case they destroy one of my creatures, we can get it back with Rutstein. Or if we happen to mill it. And then we'll discard the communion end of turn. And this is a Knight Errant, alright. Hopefully they don't find any relevant interaction. Adeline's a good one, although won't trigger right now at least. Okay, so let's see what we can find. A land. And a cavern, not even finding Abandoned Mire to channel. So yeah, I think we're just going for Rona again. Find Rutstein, alright, so now we're just a Relic of Legends away from comboing. Do need to keep Pilgrim alive. But uh, yeah, we'll pass for now. So one Relic of Legends to rule them all. 46 cards remain. And Thalia is fine. I guess now that we have another Rutstein, I can trade Pilgrim for Adlin, since we'll uh, just get it back. Alright, those make sense. Activate Rona. And there's Relic, alright. Do we have enough mana to win right now? So we play Relic for four. Play Rutstein. Although I still need to get back Sadistic Pilgrim as well. So I guess I am still missing a combo piece then, because if I play Rutstein, it's to get back another Rutstein. And that loop doesn't accomplish anything. Although, I think we still go Relic. And then Rona makes mana. I can play Bartolome. Sacking Rutstein, although then we lose the mana discount. Because if we play Rutstein now, get to untap Rona. Rutstein enters, keep one. Rutstein triggers. And then if I go for Pilgrim, I still need to find another Rutstein. So that's tricky. 
I guess I maybe redraw with Rona, see if we can find another. Tiny Bones joins up, or Pilgrim. Cavern. So, I guess we'll go for Bartolome now. So yeah, maybe trading for Adlin was a little overzealous. Yeah, I guess we'll just pass a turn. Next turn opponent does get to, once again, train the initiates. But uh, at least trading Rutstein doesn't matter, because I can play Rutstein getting it back. So that's still fine. And then we get a few more looks with Rona. To either find Tiny Bones, another Rutstein, an Abandoned Mire. At this point with Bartolome we can also win with Danitha, so... Yeah, we have a lot of outs. So I'm pretty confident we'll get there by next turn. So those get to train. Could just take 10 damage. And keep Rutstein in play to give us a mana discount. And then hopefully there wouldn't be a next turn to worry about. I guess never mind, our opponent does have hopeful initiate to destroy Relic of Legends. I hadn't thought of that. So that can mess with the uh, Rutstein combo. Does it mess with the Donatha combo? It can blow up the enchantment. But we can just sacrifice Donatha right away, so that doesn't really interfere. Alright, so we might be on the Donatha combo now. Can still maybe trade off for Rutstein for one initiate, but they'll still have the other one to activate. So, I think I'll still take it after all. Because there's no way for me to force them to use both initiates right now. Alright, so this game's not quite going to plan. Had I taken the hit from Adlin, we top deck Relic, we could have just won, I think, since they didn't have any mana untapped. And now we have to worry about initiate blowing up Relic. But maybe Rona will find all the answers. Another Communion doesn't do anything for me. Or does it? If I play Communion on Rutstein, I can play Rutstein getting back. Alright, I guess it maybe helps, actually. Although, again, they can just blow up the Relic of Legends. Or potentially the Communion. So for opponents paying attention, I don't think we'll get there. So those trigger, get back Pilgrim. Get back Rutstein. So both of those go to hand. Play Pilgrim. Can make a mana. And then we want to tap Rotstein for mana. Cast it. Rona triggers. I guess we'll start looting. Or I can keep my Gunjo for removal. Sure, I guess we'll just make mana. Opponent does not seem to pull the trigger on Hopeful Initiate yet, but sooner or later they're gonna figure it out. Because this is the Rutstein combo. And the more life we gain, the less in danger we are of getting attacked to death next turn.
Well, I'm gonna keep going through this slowly because I need to be able to change course if they do decide to destroy a relic. Ideally, your opponent just times out so they can't hold priority anymore. Yeah, hopeful initiate's ability doesn't always come up, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're just not uh, thinking of it. Alright. Feels like I'm getting away with something here. Our opponent's life total ever dwindling. Oh, I missed the Rona trigger. Well, I'm just gonna assume our opponent is not gonna interact. So I can just tap Rona right away. Well, our life total's about to surpass the opponent's, so I think we're in the clear. Definitely not the most arena-friendly combo, since it takes a lot of clicking. But our opponent's also holding us up a little bit. Alright, well, if our opponent suddenly realizes that they can blow up Relic, then we can either look for another one or look for Donitha. But at least now we've got a bit of a life total buffer. I assume our opponents left the building by now. And down to five they go. Alright, well, looks like we got there in the end. But yeah, it's nice that there's a bit of overlap with the two combos, since both Pilgrim and Tiny Bones joins up are necessary to actually win the game. And then, uh, yeah, kind of depends how our opening hand looks like, whether we go for Rudstein or for Donitha, but both are viable. And of course, Rona ties everything together quite nicely. We could also sack some creatures to Bartolome to drain the opponent to death. Opponent activates Mirex, that one they remember to activate. 
So now we don't have to worry about initiate anymore. Alright, let's just do it a quick way now. Aruna, you've served us well. Alright, so we got to see our janky four-color legends in action, and I'm glad we at least got to showcase the various combos that the deck is capable of, but as you could see, it's not the most consistent combo deck out there, also not the fastest, so there's a lot of best-of-one standard decks that can run you over before you assemble the combo, or decks that have enough interaction to pick apart the various combo pieces, so it's not the easiest deck to actually win with, and when you do, it also takes a while to click through all the different menus, so it's not the most arena friendly friendly deck either, so definitely would not recommend it for the rank ladder, but as kind of a novelty deck to play once in a while, it's pretty fun to see. So that'll do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!